Well, the IJT is an association of companies that wish to tap into the gay travel market. Uh, they don't need necessarily to be gay companies, uh, but they need to welcome the gay traveler. Um, at the moment, we have in the whole world over 1,700 uh, companies that are members of the IGLTA in 69 countries. And what we do is actually to represent our members and to promote them and facilitate the networking between uh, suppliers and, and buyers. The gay travel market has changed a lot in the sense that you cannot talk about the gay travel anymore. Uh, we have become a much more refined market segment and then we are not only uh, uh, seen as a market niche as we uh, 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 were seen before, but within our market segment there are many different niches. So the gay travel market in Scandinavia is, Scandinavians do travel quite a lot and um, the outbound market is, is interesting for other countries as well as the incoming for uh, for any country actually to come to Scandinavia. We were first with gay marriages, um, both Norway, Sweden and Denmark are quite big in the area. Helsinki has now started as well to do promotions towards the gay tourism sector. And I think the possibilities are big. Uh, it's just a matter of letting the, the companies to, um, to actually start work for the, for the sector more than they have done so far. We do have a problem with the, with the stereotypes, not only from, from the, the traditional um, gay marketing people towards gay clubbing big city men uh, but also from, from actually the community itself that are, are focusing on this group very much uh, and not so much towards um, uh, lesbians which I think is a big mistake. So You can go everywhere, we don't have a gay ghetto in uh, Tel Aviv and we don't have any gay cafes or gay restaurants because we have gay city and people think that we are one, we're not gay friendly at all but actually we're one of the top five countries in the world regarding to gay rights. The uh, gay market is, and the gay community is much smarter. She's not, she won't go to anyone who has a flag on the interest of the shop. And we don't know, uh, the this destination with only gay parties is not good enough for us. We want the culture and we want the history. We want some added value. On the other side, it will strengthen our community rights because it's either you got rights by political power or economic power. And as strong as we will be, it will be much easier for the next generation to be gay or lesbian, be or trans in the world. Yeah, World, world Rainbow Hotels is the first GDS-enabled global hotel brand. Um, later this year we'll be releasing it on the GY chain code, which is uh, recognized worldwide as a, a gay-oriented code. Um, but what we need to try and do is to bring some uniformity to what a gay hotel is going to be so people know what they're booking when they're booking it. If, agent, if an agent is making the booking for you, um, they will know what they're booking on your behalf rather than sending you to an inappropriate hotel or a hotel that doesn't quite suit your needs. But they need to um, be able to focus their brand appropriately at the right target audience. I mean, a lot of it is going to depend on the individual and their disposable income. It will depend on what destinations they want to go to. So there's obviously always going to be a degree of, of individuality in any decision. Are, for the first time at EDB, it's uh, our effort to bring more tourists to Brazil, to actually promote gay and lesbian tourism in Brazil. Uh, Brazil is already a big destination, but we can improve and you can bring a lot more people. Rio has been for a long time the favorite and still is the favorite. You know, it was chosen as the global destination last year uh, for gay tourists. But uh, Brazil has uh, regional places that the Brazilians go for a long time. And one of the secrets, and I'm going to tell you with a lot of pride because it's from it's Florianopolis where I come from. It's a little island on the southern coast of Brazil that is competing with Rio now for the beach destination in Brazil. Uh, so for the carnival, for the summer, you'll find a lot of uh, gay guys from South America, from Rio, from Sao Paulo, and from all over the world coming to Florianópolis to have a good time. I think in the past it was much more concentrated in North America. Europe was a little bit behind, and the rest of the world you didn't talk about gay market. Nowadays we have chambers of commerce of gay tour, gays uh, in South America, in Brazil, in Australia, in Israel. You have national associations all over the place for the gay tourism. So I think there's a peak on it that's coming. And uh, the North Americans and the Europeans are finding out new destinations and new markets where to work. 
to you. The, the big failure happens when you actually don't differentiate your market segment. You have to give uh, um, the gay traveler what the gay traveler wants. You think there's actually a, a political changes and, and, and changes in, in society come first. And then we will be there. I don't think, you know, we are not going to Iran uh, uh, in, in, in the hope that uh, whatever is going to happen. Uh, we first wait for uh, social, uh, political social changes to happen. And then we will actually reward a, a country, a city, a destination, you know, for embracing us uh, the way that we, we want to be embraced.